Well, we're joined now by one of the Conservative MPs on the Culture Select Committee, Louise Mensch, and also by the solicitor, Mark Lewis, who has represented a number of victims of phone hacking. Um, Louise Mensch, you couldn't bring yourself to find Rupert Murdoch unfit uh, to run an international company, but so you presumably found him fit. No, no, not at all, but it wasn't our job to find him fit or unfit. By definition, that's the job of Ofcom. It's the regulator's job. It's not something the select committee considered, either when he came before us to give evidence or in any session that we had discussing the phone hacking report afterwards. It was just uh, he wasn't found guilty of misleading the committee and we felt it was thrown in at the end to say something negative. And it is a shame because many of the other conclusions, the criticism of News Corporation corporately, the criticism of James Murdoch, we could have signed up to that and we would have voted for the report. Well, the, the thing surely is you, you must, having had him before you, conclude uh, whether he was just ignorant or mendacious. But, but, but to leave it as nothing, he surely deserves some judgment from you. Well, no, we did indeed um, conclude that he was ignorant and then there was debate as to, as to his degree of culpability for that ignorance. There well, was debate well, uh, within the yeah, committee. You didn't but nobody... accept that that ignorance extended to willful blindness, which one of your no. Tory number did. No, one of our Tory number did and, and three of us didn't. And in fact, that's quite useful, I think, because it shows that the Conservatives were not voting as a monolithic block. We divided on various different amendments and voted very different ways. Um, Rupert Murdoch, to my mind, was running the global company and this was somewhat below uh, his pay grade. But the issue of fit and proper just isn't something that we've ever considered and it is a matter for Ofcom. Well, uh, um, so nobody could support it. Mark Lewis, uh, there's good and bad news in this finding for you, presumably as a lawyer representing people who've been hacked. Uh, the, the good news must be that this is a strong finding. The bad news must be that the, the committee was bitterly divided and that will be used by News Corp as indeed they are tonight, to sort of say, well, he wasn't as bad as you thought he was. I, I don't think there was any bad news in it at all. I mean, if you look at the report, probably 95% of the report is unanimous. It's all agreed. There's one small bit in it as to whether or not they're fit and proper. Now, if you, if you followed the actual committee's deliberations, what they were saying is we were looking at what was, whether or not we were lied to in 2009. Now, even I would say that Rupert Murdoch and James Murdoch did not lie to the committee in 2009. That might be because they didn't give evidence in 2009 mm -hmm. and therefore that vindicates them totally. So on, on the comparison between the evidence in 2011 and the 2012 report and what happened in 2009 and the 2010 report, of course they didn't lie. Whether or not they're fit and proper is going to be determined by Ofcom. So um, what about the three former executives who you do indeed find uh, to have misled you. Yes. Uh, what is the punishment? The tower? Well, it's really up to Parliament to decide a punishment. I suggested today, purely on my own account, that offence should be created, a contempt of Parliament offence similar to the contempt of court offence. The trouble is, is that at the moment people can uh, mislead Parliament with impunity and what we've decided to do is to refer it to the House of Commons. So I was glad to hear Mark Lewis's well, comments. What's the worst that could happen to them? Well, at the moment, you could that, be is detained for in the parliament. that is for Parliament. Well, being detained in Parliament would be a heinous punishment for anybody, <laughs> we can all agree. But um, that is something for the House of Commons to decide. Mark Lewis, however, is absolutely right that the vast majority of this report was unanimous amongst the committee. Uh, Mark Lewis, what about America? It doesn't look as if anyone's going to take any sort of, uh, as it were, corporate action there, finding them guilty of foreign corrupt practices. But what about your clients over there? Well, well there are some civil claims that will be pursued in, in America. I think the, the other issue that people are looking at in America is a corporate issue because, of course, if things were known here, a, a substantial amount of information here wasn't given to the shareholders, it wasn't given to potential investors who ought to have known that there was this huge contingent liability at a significant, albeit small, part of a company. It's still significant. They should have been told because they could have millions of dollars of claims. Louise Mensch, Mark Lewis, thank you both very much for coming in.